the sweepstakes. Hey, you fellas, come here. Come here, all of you. Come here. What is it? What's wrong? What's wrong? Your grandfather's a rich man. Is that wrong? Huh? The order of William O'Keefe? Yes. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Bob, I still say you should go on the trip by yourself. Then you'd have some money left to do some other things you want to do. But this is what I want most. I'm taking you all to Ireland. Now we'll hop a plane to Dublin, and from there we'll go over to Farnsey. You seem to forget that you're going to have to pay an awful lot of tax on this money you want. And even though, as you say, we'd be the guests of the O'Caseys in Ireland, you'd be spending a lot of money on plane fares. But, Steve, the money is mine, and I want to run the show this time. I don't know how we could all go anyway, Bub. But why not? The kids will be out of school. And as you say yourself, you're between assignments. I know, Bub. It's all settled. Now, I'll write to Mickey and tell him we're on our way. Hey, Bub, now you can quit horsing around with those socks and hire a tailor or something. You know, I may just do that. 14,000 bucks is a lot of cabbage. You bet. Who's cousin Mickey? Mickey O'Casey. Tell me who is. Come into the house. Come on, take my stick to you. Hey, yeah, I'm coming. Remember, not a word. Get in there. <laughs> you can just call me O'Casey, William O'Casey. I'm taking my family to Ireland. That's fine, Mr. O'Casey. Isn't it, though? I'm an independently wealthy man. <laughs> Him with a little gaily. It always softens him up. The colony is Shadrach. Tell him the French language never was one of me strong suits, <laughs> will you, sir? French? Don't you understand pure Gaelic, you Irish hillbilly? Hey, wait a minute, Bob. We're trying to get to a place called Farnsey. Well, there's an excellent bus that'll take you part way to Farnsey, and then you switch to a cab part way. Then you ask for Tom Keenan and the hire of his cart so you won't have to spend a fortune on cab fares. I could take that bus right across the street. We're not taking any buses. I'm a wealthy man. Now get in the cab there, fellas. Get in the cab now. Well, if you want to throw your money around like water, I'll take your suitcases. Uh, look, Bob, don't you think it'd be a good idea to check our luggage here in uh, Dublin until we find out what the accommodations are in Farnsey? My cousin Mickey is going to put us up at his own diggings, I keep telling you. Now, if you do a good job, I'll give you a tip that'll grow hair in your hat. Yes, sir. Us rich Irish would know how to tip for good service. about, I found this in your post box. It's from America. Yeah, Han said hello to your bride and Sullivan. Hello, boys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, pour yourself some tea, dear. I just made a fresh pot. Thank you. And how is your dear mother and your sisters that are satisfied with Ireland just the way it is and don't have any fancy ideas about leaving the dear country and going to foreign lands looking for a rich husband? The family's fine. Happily swilling the pigs and sweeping the earth and floor. Never caring there's another world so close for the looking. I'm a somewhat perplexed girl. This letter is from William O'Casey, and I'm vastly certain the only William O'Casey we knew passed to his glory in 19 and 27 in America. Good morning, Mary Kathleen. Good morning, Mickey. Has the post come, Mum? That it has. And who do we have in America by the name of William O'Casey who didn't die in 1927? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, William O'Casey. 
is the son of my Uncle Sean, as was married to me Aunt Bridget. My brother's child. Little Will. With the blonde hair falling into his eye and the racking cough and forever falling in the muck with the sun to best on. May I see the letter? Sean, little Will. Will! Oh. Well, America cannot be half bad. They taught him to write. They're coming here. They're coming to this house. Why? I don't know. What? Will you speak up when you're addressing your elders? How many times have I told you the man who mumbles usually stumbles? Remember that. I will. I, I will. <laughs> What a country you came from. Well, I told you, Steve. Right, I'll see. Beautiful. Do you guys know that in a field like this one, with rich earth and rainfall and everything, there are about 220 worms per square foot? You don't mean it. <laughs> Wait till you see the welcome we get. You know, there's over 300 Ocasis live around here. You know, it'd be interesting to find out if we look like it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yes. Do I have to kiss a bunch of ladies and be polite? Need all the food and stuff? Chip, I'm afraid it's me that'll be kissing because I'm the one that... The Yanks do show up and spill the whole thing to your mother. I was too smart for that. I wrote him a nice letter inviting him not to come. <laughs> Never mind. It would be disaster if she found out I indulged in tainted money. So I have it all in cash, hidden in my mattress. <laughs> oh, I see Tom Keenan has got himself some tourists. What's that over you, Mick? I'm beginning to have myself a suspicion. I should have sent that letter air mail. <laughs> Steve, I think the old coot with the gray hair is my cousin Mickey. But where's the big family welcome? Would you by any chance be Michael O'Casey? That I am, sir. I'm pleased to see you, Will. I'm glad to see you, Mickey. Hey, hold those, will you, Riley? Yeah. Thank you. Mickey, you look grand. Will. You look grand indeed. Will, me, boy. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> You look wonderful, wonderful. Let me take a good look at you, young man. Take it. That strikes me you're getting a mite thin in the hair. Well, who wants fat hair? <laughs> <laughs> my name's Patty Brophy. Patty, I'm glad to know you. Hi. Now, this is my son-in-law, Steve Douglas, and my grandsons, Chip and Robbie and Mike. Hi, Miss Brophy. Hi. Well, I'll be on my way. You folks will want to reminisce. Goodbye to y'all. Goodbye. Bye. So long. Bye. Well, I uh, fancy seeing you here again at the fence. <laughs> yes. Well, how about us going inside and getting the load off our feet? I, I, I take it to... these are your grandsons? <laughs> yes, yes, you just met them. Well, I'll, I'll come visit you at the hotel. Hotel? What hotel? Bob, uh... Hey, we could have endless chats about the old day. Uh, Mr. O'Casey, we're planning on staying at the New Aaron Hotel in Dublin. No, we're not, Steve. Bob, I think... It... Michael! <laughs> Send your little John is home. It's tea time. <laughs> uh, who is that? My mother. Your Aunt Kate. Aunt Kate? Bob, if this is the same Aunt Kate you used to tell us about, uh, how old is she? It couldn't be Aunt Kate. Well, she'd be 109. A hundred and three. <laughs> but I'll see you at the, at the new air, and is it, huh? Uh, I'll visit you tomorrow morning. But that's my Aunt Kate. I'm going to see her. Bob, I think... Well, wait a bit, Will. Uh, let me go ahead and prepare her for your coming. You're to say naught about gambling or the sweepstakes. I tell you naught. What's a naught? <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but it certainly wasn't this. Well, Bob, at a hundred and three, Aunt Kate isn't exactly what you call a young woman. He probably doesn't want to excite her. Well, yeah. Uh, do you guys realize how much blood had to be pumped through Aunt Kate's veins and arteries? How much tissue replaced, hair grown, energy expended, fingernails replaced in 103 years? No, but I bet it's just as interesting as the number of worms in that field back there. I'm not kidding. Like the body, after... Rob. How does that look? Now, 
And I thought that my brother had passed away in 1927. I keep telling you, Mom, it is not Uncle Sean. It's young Will. And they're staying at a hotel, and I think they prefer it that way. Well, it's not your incessant babbling child. Gilbride and Sullivan, we have company. Have them in! You can come in now. My door bends down now with your tall head, young man. I'll be coming. And who's this? This is my son, Mike. Mike, that's a grand name. See, you don't tarnish it. Well, I'll try not to, eh, Kate? And what's this one? And this is my son, Robbie. That sounds Scottish. Well, the boys are half Scottish. Well, he's got an Irish face, and that's the main thing. <laughs> How do you do, Aunt Kate? And, uh... And now, my brother, bring out your son. Where is young Will? Young Will? Oh, but never mind. Nobody could mistake that face. Oh, oh come into me arms. Young <laughs> William from America, I'm thinking. I'm Steve Douglas. Your wife enjoyed the trip, did she? <laughs> oh, I don't have a wife. My boys and uh, Bob, the boy's grandfather, William O'Casey, came with me. I was just on my way to the post office. Now, isn't that a coincidence? So was I. You were? I, uh, I must be going in the wrong direction. Oh, no. The, the main post office is down that way. Oh. <laughs> my name is Mary Kathleen Connolly. Oh, what do you do? I'm not married either. <laughs> well, you're not. Have you seen out of the countryside? Barnsey, for instance. Well, no, I haven't. You see, we just... Uh... We could go to the post office together and see a good deal along the way. Yes, I suppose we could. Well, come along, then. I'll be your guide. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I still can't understand why there was nobody to meet me. Well, your cases are scattered, son. Hey, um, I'd be happy to hear you'd say naught about the, uh, you know what, involving the money we acquired. Well, I haven't seen anybody around to tell. It's me poor old mother I worry about. It would be a shock. Hey, Bob. Is it okay if me, Mike, and Robbie go down the stream we found? Hunt for polywogs and stuff? Sure. And mind you don't fall in the muck, young Will. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How many times have I told you not to scatter your shavings here where Gilbride and Sullivan will come at them? Now go to your own. Oh, I'm not a child. Get in line! Why not anyway? Why not anyway? <laughs> That's telling the man, Kate. Oh, do you sit there and laugh at me, child, when you're as guilty as he is? Huh? Now, you do the same, youngster. Go to your room. Now, wait a minute. Let's get two or three of these things straight. Let me out of here. <laughs> this is stupid. I'm no 
kid. Let me out of here. Let me. And Kate. <laughs> And the poor man must be disappointed. Yes, I'm afraid he was. I uh, guess he was really expecting quite a welcome from all his relatives. Every third person in this vicinity is an old Casey. I can't understand. Paddy? Paddy old Casey, come here if you will. Good day, Mary Kathleen. Good day to you. Paddy old Casey, Stephen Douglas. Ah, it's a pleasure, sir. Indeed. Really? Yes, indeed, sir. I was thinking, Patty, did you not know that Willow Casey was stopping out at the Fens? Young Will from America? The same. Well, thinking that now, I was wondering just the other day... James! James O'Casey, wait up a bit! <laughs> What's going on in there? Oh. The O'Casey's throw a hooli. It's a hooli. A uh, hooli, huh? <laughs> Young Will has struck a gold mine at the sweepstakes. <laughs> and Mickey's in for part of the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have known I had relatives like you, Cognines, over here. I'd have been back years ago if I'd have had the money. <laughs> Michael Mitchell! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's a grand party. Aye, that it is. Uh, have you noticed how young Will is throwing money around like water? Aye, that he is. <laughs> What's this I hear about young Will and the sweepstakes? He did a terrible thing. He went and he gambled. <laughs> Gambling is the devil's wedge. I'm with you. I'm dead set against gambling. Taking hard-earned money and losing it. Right. However, if you recall, you've never heard me say a word against winning it. <laughs> you mean... It's all right to gamble as long as you win. <laughs> yeah, man. I won almost 5,000 quid. Hmm? The same as Will. Michael, get you down here tomorrow and we'll count it together. <laughs> <laughs> much of a party compared to your fine American ways. Well, our music and dancing is a little different, but the idea is still the same. Perhaps one day we can go to a party in America. Then we can compare. <laughs> As you probably guessed, that wasn't the end of our story. See our next exciting episode. Stephen, go to your room. Bribery will not save you. Will Aunt Kate send me to bed without my supper? <laughs> Mary Kathleen, how are you two? Oh, will I get the beer off my coat? Welcome or no welcome. I'm not going to stand up.
proud to balance the day to you, Paddy Brophy. It looks like a grand day for the Ocasis, huh? Ah, we're proud of Will and Mick. Imagine them winning so much money. Well, I'm the party who delivered the sweepstakes money to Mr. Michael O'Casey. I suppose you know that. And Mickey sent half to young Will in America. I'm aware of the situation, postman Brophy. If they're up in that room, I can't find them. What, what a goofy thing to lose. Maybe Bub can stand behind something when he makes a speech. Bob, maybe you didn't even bring them. Are you sure you packed them? Sure, I'm sure I packed them. <laughs> and Dan came to press for me. And I pressed them and I put them on your bed. Well, then where are they? <laughs> I'll go up and take a look. Dad, I just looked. I'll look again. <laughs> welcome or no welcome. I'm not going to stand out there while the breeze whistles McCushler through my bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> in this condition in front of Gilbride and Sullivan. Boys, turn the other way. Turn the other way. Let's get ideas. <laughs> Here, let me help you out your bike. I can get off the wheel by myself, Tom Grogan. Now, there's no need to bake me head off, Mary Kate, love. Because I once had the weakness of intellect to become engaged to you. There's no reason for you to call me other than Mary Kathleen Connolly. Mom, they're probably all the way yeah, yeah. Did you find them? Yeah, they're up in the yeah, window. Find them. Well, come on, Mama, hurry up. Mayor Grogan's come to lead us to the parade. Oh, what a day for the O'Casey's. Tom Keenan's even brought his car. Right, now, where's your coat? Oh, come on. Where's my car? Oh, yeah. Where's my car? Boys, boys, get ready to go. Get down. I got your hat. Take me. Come on. Get your yeah. bicycle legs ready. Where's my hat? Let's go. Who's got my hat? I want to go. Uh, uh, Rob, oh, Rob, where's my hat? He's got it. <laughs> Anyway, you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from the prodigal himself. So without further ado, I give you young Willow Casey, who became rich and famous winning the Irish sweepstakes. <laughs> Citizens of Farnsey, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this glorious welcome. I paid a slight visit the other day over in County Sligo to my little pal, Jerry Finnegan. <laughs> Jerry, I said, that's a grotesque looking pair of socks you got on there. One all green, the other all red. They're... He says, yes, it is grotesque. He says, I want to tell you a secret. I got another pair at home just like them. <laughs> <laughs> Dad? If he starts telling those vaudeville jokes, we'll be here all day. <laughs> then there was the day he walked into the pub. <laughs> but he ran out of it. So Casey Fair had the population in stitches just now. There's Bob pretty much at home on the stage. Boy. Is there anything wrong, Stephen? How much uh, farther is it back to the fence? Only three kilometers. I guess I'm a little out of condition. It's been quite a while since I've ridden a bicycle. <laughs> You're out of practice. Yeah. You know, I just can't get over the beauty of this country. Everywhere you look. Now, uh, what's the name of that lake? Lake? In Ireland, we don't call that a lake. That's just O'Brien's Pond. Oh. Well, back to the fence. Stephen. Why don't we go over there and sit a bit? You can rest your legs. Well, they could use it. Fine. you not to breathe so deeply. You'll not notice the stench so much. Stench? The mosses and the dead leaves and the rotting logs are not exactly perfumes from Paris. If you've no imagination, you can even get used to it. I guess I have no imagination. It smells like perfume to me. <laughs> hey, you guys, wait up. What's the matter? I think I got a flat. Oh, boy. Chip, how come you're always the one who winds up with a flat tire or a poison oak or something? It's not my fault. Okay, okay, you got. Why don't you quit acting like a dad just because you're going to get married? Picked up a nail. Hey, you guys, there's dad. 
Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Come along. Are you a professional wet blanket or something? Yeah. Well, heck, if I was stuck out there with a girl, I'd want him to come and rescue me. You know, Chip, in about two years, you're going to wonder how you could ever make a dumb remark like that. Get your blanket. Get out of here. You mean you guys are going to leave your father out there all alone with her? Well, let's put it this way, Chip. If she gets smart with him, he can always beat her up. <laughs> You know, I've heard about the wonderful fishing in Ireland. Do you suppose there are any fish in this pond? Oh, nothing but trout. Tell me about your home city. <laughs> you have great wide streets with them giant American cars like we see in the films? I'm afraid we do, Mary Kathleen. There are trout in here, huh? Jumping, wiggly things. So many of them, they get into each other's way. <laughs> do you attend many parties? Uh, no. Filled with trout, huh? And here I am, 4,000 miles away from my trout rod. Well, we could borrow a pair of fishing sticks of my brother's. Fishing sticks? You mean a trout rod? Sure. Well, let's go. Come on. My brother's place was only a storm throw around the bed. Wonderful. Full of trout, huh? You suppose O'Brien to care if we fish there? Oh, he won't mind. Oh, good. seen fishing like this. I, I caught him in less than a half an hour just standing on the bank. No, oh, we're kidding. Kidding. Yeah, where can I put him at, Kate? We'll have him for breakfast, huh? Stephen, go to your room. Bribery will not save you. What? <laughs> Mama has rules about appearing in time for supper. Oh, oh well, I'm sorry I'm late for dinner, Aunt Kate, but, uh, well, the fish didn't start rising till about an hour ago, and, uh, well, it was still daylight, so I thought... Here we eat by daylight, so as to save the black and tans from having light to work by in the night. Black and tans? Aunt Kate, Ireland's been a free state since 1921. I'm aware of that. Tis but a tradition with us. Tis also a way to save electricity. Tis also a fact that you will not interfere when your elders are conducting discipline. March! Aunt Kate, Dad was just letting that red-headed lady show him around. Yeah, well, now, let's not get carried away. Go ahead, Kate. No, fellas, uh, Aunt Kate's right. Rules are rules. Good night. Stephen, come back here. Well, I talked to you. But you weren't talking to me then. Well, I meant to talk to you. You were with Mary <laughs> Kathleen Connolly this day. Yes, yes, she was uh, showing me the countryside. We'll have a serious discussion at an early date. March! <laughs> well, good night, all. Good night, Aunt Dad. Good night, Steve. Steve, me up a sandwich. Boy, I'll bet he's the only dad that ever got sent to bed without his supper. Oh, well, you're the only boys whose uncle got sent to the woodshed. <laughs> Oh, sure, but that was when you were a kid. It was yesterday. I, I was just going to ride into the village. Mickey said it was all right if I used his bike. Not bike. Bicycle. Oh, I'm sorry. The man who abbreviates always humiliates. Remember that, Steve. Yes, I'll remember. <laughs> Do you hear a hissing sound? Oh, that'll be Gilbride and Sullivan conversing. Oh. Well, I'll uh, see you later, I think. Uh, what were you going to tell me? Well, nothing that I know of. I could have sworn you had something to tell me. No, no. Well, Russ, maybe I'll ask with you. Goodbye. Front tire seems to flash. Oh, that's my child. They haven't the presence of mind to keep up a balloon inflated. Here, here, Stephen. Take mine. Oh, well, thanks very much, Aunt Kate, but I'm afraid your bike is... I mean, bicycle is a little too small for me. Take it! <laughs> the Lord refuses to offend abuse. You hear that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> thanks very much. 
Dirty little thing, isn't it? <laughs> David, you look like a, a spider straddling his web. <laughs> going to warn him about Mary Kathleen. I wonder if I'm getting old. Oh. <laughs> How old were the boys at the time? Well, Chip was about two, uh, Bobby was eight, Mike was eleven. And so Willow Casey became the boy's mother, in a manner of speaking. That's right. I don't know how we would have gotten along without him. Oh, I suppose you'd have married again. No, yeah, maybe. Have you no... no female person you're interested in, Stephen? Uh, back home, I mean. No. Oh, I have dates now and then, but uh, there's no one in particular. Mm. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Douglas, and how are you this fine oh, day? Good morning, huh? Your Honor. And <laughs> Mary Kathleen. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, all right. It was just an accident. Oh, oh Tom Brogan. <laughs> well, I, I... Let's be off, Stephen, before he drowns the entire village. Well, I'm sure you didn't do that. I'm mortified. Don't Mr. worry I about it. Really please, it'll dry right off. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, it'll smell like a brewery. <laughs> yeah. How are you swinging the club? Yes. Well, you give me a left hand. That goes right there. Now the right hand, over there. <laughs> now you overlap with a little finger. Keep your left arm straight and turn back. No, no, no. Keep your head down. Watch me. You have to keep your eye on the board. <laughs> hey. Another acorn. We're not even under a tree. Tom Grogan. <laughs> Isn't that the mayor of your village? Yes. Well, what's he doing here? Oh, I don't know. Will you have a bit more? Mm, not like that. Okay. Okay. You've had enough. I'll take a little myself. Well, that was my only venture into foreign climes. My father took me there on a sailing vessel. Well, tell us, Aunt Kate, what was Paris like in those days? Oh, it was lovely. With fine horses clopping about and beautiful ladies loping along. Oh, we couldn't stay long. There was a war. Napoleon was fair put out about it. Napoleon? <laughs> oh, Aunt Kate, did you get to meet Julius Caesar on those cards? <laughs> well, I might have, little women. Of course, I was... Nine years of age at the time, and people came and went. <laughs> oh, Napoleon III, she means. That's the yeah. Franco-Prussian War. <laughs> well, I didn't know it had such a fancy name. <laughs> okay, Mama, open up. I'm sorry we called you the bride and Sullivan two fatheads. <laughs> forget it, Mickey, forget it. Yeah, it's no use. Once you've been sent to bed without your supper, that's it. <laughs> I say, Gilbride and Sullivan are getting ready for sleep. I think it's time the little people did the same. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Thanks, Aunt Kate. Thanks, Aunt Kate. Thank you very much. You're Seems welcome, delicious. boys. Good night. I hope you're comfortable in the loft. Sure. God bless you. Hi, there. Hi, boys. Off to bed? Yeah, back in the hayloft. Well, good night. 
Ah, Stephen. Did you have a nice stroll? Yes, it's a lovely night, Aunt Kate. I'll fetch you a cup of tea. Oh, thank you. Lovely little town. Lovely people. <laughs> Did you find Fairy Kathleen? Charming girl. Yes, she's, uh, she's a lovely girl, Aunt Kate. Did you know that she's engaged to marry with Tom Grogan? The mayor? Well. No, I didn't know that. I don't think she's entirely happy with the situation. She has the restlessness. Yes, I felt that. This is not to belittle you, Stephen. But I think Mary Kathleen would marry a toad to get away from Ireland. <laughs> she would. I hope I'm not riffling your feelings. No, no, of course not. Mary Kathleen, that this is a dirty little village and a miserable place to abide in. Oh, but that's not true. Of course it's not true. Aunt Kate, I've always taught my boys to face a problem directly. We're facing the problem directly in a roundabout way. Well, I'm not so sure I like this psychological approach. Psychological, me foot. Now, come on. Aunt Kate, why don't I just tell her she's a beautiful, charming girl and she ought to stay right here in Farnsey? No! Will you do as I say now? Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you'll bring her back here to me. And, and, and I'll beat her around the shoulders with my stick. <laughs> now get along. Oh, I, uh, I think it's a very pretty little village. Quaint, has a lot of charm. Of course, there is a lot of poverty. Well, there are some parts that have poverty. I suppose it's quaint because, uh, well, it's so isolated from everything. It's not all that isolated. We read books and magazines. Oh, sure, sure. But, uh, well, you have to admit that it is pretty primitive. Granted that you have in America many things that we don't have here. Yes, and I suppose you can't miss something if you've never had it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, Mary Kathleen, as long as you're going to have to live around here, you, uh, you just have to get used to that terrible smell of the rotting peat moss. <laughs> you seem to have changed your mind, Stephen. Hmm? You once said you thought it smelled like perfume. Well, I guess it kind of grew on me. It doesn't smell like perfume to me now. Boy. <laughs> that isn't all that bad. And uh, you just have to get used to the fact that Farnsey is primitive and underdeveloped. And the roads are a mess when it rains and the pigs run all over the place. And, uh, and the people are... Uh, well, don't get me wrong. They're wonderful people. But uh, <laughs> this acorn-throwing mayor of yours, this Tom Grogan... <laughs> that acorn-throwing mayor happens to be in love with me. Oh. Well, I suppose in one of these days he'll ask you to marry him and expect you to settle down in Farnsey like all the generations before and lived in the thatched cottages and the pigs will run all over the place. And <laughs> You know, I admire a place that won't change no matter what the rest of the world does. That's right. Tom Gorgon will not change. And the mud will not change. And the pigs will not change. And friends will remain friends. And honest neighbors will remain honest neighbors. And the hearts of these good folk will not change. And... <laughs> Stephen Douglas I think you've been leading me down the garden path, so to speak <laughs> That I have, Mary Kathleen But it wasn't my idea, it was Aunt Kate's Do you know I sometimes think the dear woman has been touched by the gifts of the little people Or you could look at it this way Maybe when we get to be 103 years old, we'll be just as wise as she is. <laughs> Here you are, bawling like cotton at a feeding. Now, the truth is, they came and we made them welcome. Now, that's the sight of it. Come down, you great handsome devil, and give me a kiss. <laughs> You're a wonderful woman, Aunt Kate. Good luck to you, darling. Thank you. And you, now, young men. Watch your racking cough, and don't fall in the muck with your Sunday best. Day. I'll try not to, Aunt Kate. All right. Take care of yourself now. And do that, dear. I'll never be the same. Where's the boy? Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Aunt Kate. Goodbye, Mary Kathleen. Oh, I'll not say goodbye to you, Stephen. Goodbye, Stephen. Goodbye, Tom. Good luck to both. Thank you. Goodbye, <laughs> Nick 
crying? What are you crying for? It occurred to me, we may never see young Will again. Well, you have some money left from the sweepstakes, haven't you? Aye, Mama, in my mattress. Well, then, inquire as to visitors' permits to America for next year. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll uh, approve of my wing design, Mr. Summers. The problem was the leading edge. I worked out a new angle of camber. Hi. Oh, hi, Bob. Oh, Mr. Oh, Casey. What are you doing home? I thought you and Mr. Summers were going to do some work over at the hotel. Well, they had a convention there, the MM of SF. I nearly forgot the merry men of Sherwood Forest. When those guys get together, they really have a convention. I don't blame you for coming home. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Summers, this chart shows the variant of airflow with uh, minimal turbulence. And you'll see by this blueprint here... I get it! <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Harry. You did. She did. <laughs> Who did? <laughs> Are you kidding? Boy. Now, you see... Yeah, I have it right here. Hang on. <laughs> This Friday, they've just gotten out of school. Come dry your eyes. Forget about his life. The devil, now you know. You should have listened when I told you so. Music Maybe read before. blueprints by. I'll take care of it. Maybe tall and handsome. Robbie. But he never Rob. really felt. Rob, uh, Mr. Summers and I tried to do some work in there. Uh, what are you doing? Harry and I are writing a song, Dad. Well, uh, couldn't you write it over at Harry's house? Uh, hang on, I'll find out. Harry, Dad wants to know if we can uh, meet at your place. You did? Who did? I did. <laughs> Harry, Robbie will be over to your house in a few minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> well, boy, I bet you they never chased Beethoven off the phone. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Summers. I don't think we'll be disturbed again. Have you run out of children? Well, uh, <laughs> we still haven't heard from Chip yet. But... So, what do we need so Fellas. Fellas, Mr. Summers and I are going to be working here at the house over the weekend. Now, would you try to hold it down a little? Sure. We won't be home. This is our scout camp out weekend. Oh, fine. Then it'll be nice and quiet. But you won't be home either, Dad. Don't you remember your promise? What promise? You promised to lead the guys in the moose patrol on our first camp out. Oh, I did, didn't I, Chip? I'm sorry, but I... Well, it completely slipped my mind, Chipper. I, now I'm tied up with Mr. Summers here, and... Uh, well, I, I, just, I just can't make it. But, Dad... Well, now, don't worry. We'll think of something. I'm sure one of the other fathers will be glad to take you. I'll, uh, I'll call your father, Ernie. Don't ask my dad. He's still scratching poison ivy from the family picnic. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, why don't I try Kenny Simpson's father? How about Andy Brennan's father? He's a good camp router for a father. <laughs> why don't we just forget the whole thing? It's not that important. Well, now, Chip... Uh, Ernie, I think maybe Bob baked some cookies this afternoon. Why don't you go out and take a look in the jar, huh? Mr. Douglas, if you want to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your kid, just say so. You don't have to make excuses. Chipper, I promise you next weekend I'll be free and I'll uh, take you and the Moose Patrol any place you want to go, okay? Don't worry about it, Dad. I realize business is more important than a kid's camp. Well, no, no, it isn't more important, Chip. I I'm just sorry I forgot about it and... Uh, but I just can't walk out on Mr. Summers, can I? And we couldn't very well take him along, could we? Or, uh, could we? What's that supposed to be? Oh, well, that is the official call of the Moose Patrol. 
I want to thank you for being such a good sport about this, Mr. Summers. I'm not being a good sport. I need that design before Monday. I'd have gone to Alaska to get it in time. Well, I'll get the boys started setting up camp, and then we can get right to work. All right, boys. How do you like this place? It's fine, Dad. Yeah. Uh, what was that supposed to be, Ernie? Assembly. Oh, well, you're all assembled. I know, sir, but it says in the handbook. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Mr. Douglas? Uh, yeah, Ernie? According to the handbook, a campsite should be gently sloping so that the rainwater drains off easily. Uh, well, I don't think it's going to rain, Ernie. This is a fine place to set up camp. There isn't any water supply. And according to the handbook... So we'll, uh, we'll dig a one. <laughs> Douglas, let's get to work, huh? Uh, okay, Mr. Summers. Just getting the desk out here. You fellas got things set up now, huh? Oh, Mr. Summers, just check over that this bracket installation. Yeah, uh, where did I... Oh, look, I'll be right back. What? Hey, haven't you fellas got a fire going yet? It's about time to start dinner. Well, you were supposed to teach us that, Dad. Oh. Uh, Mr. Summers, I'll be a little while. Uh, I've got to teach the boys how to start a fire. No, no, Douglas. I'll do that. You better get back here. Okay. Well, fellas, I uh, hereby appoint uh, Mr. Summers' uh, honorary father. That uh, makes it official, huh? <laughs> I uh, just made you an honorary father. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, Moose. Believe it or not, I used to be a Boy Scout myself. I'll show you how the Beaver Patrol used to build a fire. Gosh, sir, did they have Boy Scouts in the olden days? Yeah, they had... Uh, they had Boy Scouts in the olden days. I got a merit badge for dragon slaying. That's a joke. Oh, you mean about the dragons, huh? Now, the first thing we've got to do is get some wood. No, it isn't, sir. The handbook says first you have to clear out the area. Well... Clear out and get some wood. Now, that's all the tinder we need. Some dry leaves, a few twigs, bark, things like that. Well, we're ready to start. As soon as we get the tinder lit, we'll add the kindling. No, sir. I beg your pardon? You can't use a cigarette lighter. The handbook says all you can use is two matches. I do it the hard way. No matches at all. What does the book say about that, Ernie? Nothing. I think he's got us. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe they mean you can't use anything but two matches. What are you talking about? It says you can use flint and steel. And how about that gizmo up the two sticks? We're not supposed to use a fire that isn't official, sir. We better ask Mr. Douglas. Don't bother him. But we need him. He's supposed to teach us trekking and trailing now. Who says so? Mr. Comstock, our scoutmaster. Okay. Here we go, tracking and trailing, but under no circumstances do we bother Mr. Douglas. Tracking and trailing, men! <laughs> hold it, fellas, hold it. I'm going to show you how we used to blaze a trail. Uh, somebody lend me a knife. Here, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now... Did you know Daniel Boone, sir? No. Do what? No, I didn't know Daniel Boone. You cut a hunk of bark out of the tree so that a white spot shows. You cut a live tree, sir? Naturally, a white spot wouldn't show on a dead one. You'll take your knife. Sorry, sir. What's the matter now? A Boy Scout never cuts into a live tree. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, reverent, and doesn't cut in a tree. Where does it say that? In the handbook, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, fellas, let's have a demonstration of first aid. Anybody got a first aid kit? He does. You never let me down, do you? Well, Scott is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous. I know. I know. <laughs> Now, uh, fellas, first aid. We're out on the trail. We've got a sick moose on our hands. Ernie here has dislocated his jaw. How do we bandage him? Put a tourniquet around his neck. Yeah. No. First, you have to immobilize the jaw. Around like so. So. 
That's right. Hold it there. Uh, are you comfortable, Ernie? Can you talk? Not a not a word, huh? Fine. Well, back to tracking and trailing. As I was saying before Ernie dislocated his draw, you uh, take your knife and you cut a blaze from the tree like that. That's so you can find your way back. See, when you come back along the path, you see where the blazes are, and we're all home free. Where are you going, boys? I know we're not supposed to bother my dad, but it's time for him to tell ghost stories. What? Songs and ghost stories. It's scout tradition, sir. No, no, no. Let him alone. Come on, I'll, I'll tell you a ghost story. Oh, boy, Mr. Summers is going to tell stories. Yeah, yeah. Now, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Let's see now. Once upon a time, many years ago, in a little town in New England, there was this haunted house. And every night, just at midnight, when the church bells tolled, this terrible ghost. I once read a book on the supernatural. There's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> a ghost is just an apparition. It's something you think you see, but you don't really see it. It's like a UFO. What the UFO? A UFO is an unidentified flying object. People think they see them all the time. Sure, look at the astronauts. Carpenter saw all that stuff up in space, and what did it turn out to be? Vapor condensation. <laughs> Look, you guys, if Mr. Summers gets a charge of telling corny old ghost stories, the least we can do is listen. Go ahead, Mr. Summers. What about your haunted house in New England? Oh, forget it. <laughs> now listen to this. Once upon a launching pad, there was this haunted Atlas Titan missile. That I can believe. Uh, this missile had already made three trips to Saturn, two to Venus, this time it took off right out of the Milky Way. Oh, it was a corker, boys. <laughs> oh, boy! Then the mysterious stranger from the planet Virus X signed the trade agreement. They all got into their spaceships and flew back to their individual galaxies, where they lived many happy light years thereafter. Sir, that isn't how it ended on television. This is the way I tell it, and this is the way it ends. I'll bank the fire. You go to bed. <laughs> what a way to get a new wing design. <laughs> gets into a girdle easier than you get into that sleeping bag. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to wake you up. A couple of more hours work on those designs, but I uh, ought to have them finished. Good night. Good night. Nobody pays any attention to it. Right now, I'd settle for the peace and quiet of a nice hotel convention. Yeah. Mr. Douglas? Uh, yes, Larry. What now? The Indian rope trick? Is this a good sheep shank? Well, it uh, looks pretty good to me, Larry. I don't imagine a sheep could have shanked a better one. Yes, sir. Well, now that we've had our sheep shank break, what about the wing? Well, I've uh, run into a little problem here, Mr. Summers. If I can reduce the Reynolds number. Uh, Ernie, if there's anything there you don't understand, I want you to feel perfectly free to go away. Uh, what is it, Ernie? We're out of water. Out of water? What happened? You said you had plenty this morning. But you made a squash. We'll figure it out now. Please, Ernie, don't bother us. Go find yourself a reservoir or something. 
Should I, Mr. Douglas? Well, uh, no, Ernie. I'd better find some water. Ernie, you round up the canteen. Oh, Steve. I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, we're only going to be out a couple more hours. We can get him a cold drink on the way home. I used to camp in this area years ago. It seems to me I remember water over in that direction someplace. You want us to go with you, Dan? Oh, no, you stay here and practice your knots. I'll be back in a little while. How do you explain to a corporation that you can't start manufacturing a plane because the designer's out finding water for the moose patrol? There's nothing about that in the handbook, sir. <laughs> find him? No, I went all the way to the top of the hill and I didn't see him. That proves it. He's lost. My dad never gets lost. He always knows where he is. He's been gone for over an hour and he wouldn't leave us alone that long. He doesn't know that Mr. Summers gave up and left. I'll bet you he didn't even find any water. Maybe he needs some help at the canteen. I'm gonna go look for him. I'm the patrol leader. No one looks for anybody unless I say so. Okay. What do we do? Well, it well, I guess we go look for him. If we're going on a searching party, the handbook says we have to bring all our emergency equipment. Patrol, fall in. Here's if we give the moose call. Are you ready? Go! Hey, it's Mr. Douglas. Sounds more like a real moose. Don't be dumb. How could a real moose get lost? That's my father. I'd know him from a moose, wouldn't I? You know where would that come from? Let's get over there on that double. Came from over there. Boost patrol, forward! It is a moose. <laughs> moose? It's a cow. What's the difference? It's not my father. <laughs> He's lost. How can a cow get lost? We're supposed to be smarter than cows and we're lost. I'll tell you one thing. We not only found milk, but we found water, too. The dam must be around here somewhere. And let's try the moose call again. Do you want us to pull you out? 
Yeah, I, I would appreciate it if you would. Just start it, just start it. Okay, let's tie a bowling knot for Mr. Douglas to hang on to. A bowling knot? You know, a loop. Oh, yeah. Why a bowling knot? The handbook says I vote for a square knot. Why? Because I don't know how to tie a bowling knot. Look, tie any kind of a knot, will you, Phyllis? Just put, put the rope down here and get me out of here. Come on. E! 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 Hey, Dad, I got an idea. We can get you out real easy. We'll be right back. Stay right where you are. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> 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 By shock, unquote. Well, Ernie, let's uh, leave the shock treatment for the next uh, camp out, huh? Would you settle for artificial respiration? <laughs> oh, uh, thanks, fellas. I'm all right. Dad, Mr. Summers got mad. He's hitching a ride back to town. Well, I can't say I blame him. Let's uh, fill these canteens and get back to camp. Huh? Okay. Go down, down that way. Excuse me, men. But could you please direct me to the state highway? Would you like a drink of water first? I could sure use one. And then maybe we could get back to work? Okay. <laughs> I want to apologize, Mr. Summers, for the rough weekend. Oh, no, I'm the one who should apologize. I've got to respect a man who honors a prior commitment, especially to an 11-year-old son. Hey, this is great. Where'd you get this idea? Well, you'd be surprised how much thinking a man can do at the bottom of a well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was dried out, but I guess I'm not. <laughs>